Hey guys, it's Jason Creo and you're watching the Lawn Care Life. Today I'm in a zoysia lawn and I want to give you some tips for the summer and also show you a lot of the weeds that can be common in a zoysia lawn and talk to you about some of the products I'm using to control those weeds. Today's video is sponsored by Graham Spray Equipment. Graham is the company that makes the spray rigs that I use to spray my lawns with. I definitely recommend them. The link is in the description there over in Douglasville, Georgia. Let's get started taking a look at the lawn. All right, zoysia grass. Some people, I get comments on YouTube a lot. Some people love zoysia, some people hate zoysia. Uh, it does well in my area. I'm close to Birmingham, Alabama, and you know, whatever reason. I know people up north, they'll say, I've got zoysia in it. You know, it's only green like two months out of the year. <laughs> so, but here's one of the great things about zoysia. I mean, you, look at here. You got this tree here, and look, there, there's actually, I mean, it's not, super thick and great but I mean low hanging limbs on this tree and you still have a fairly decent amount of zoysia grass under there there's no way Bermuda grass uh, would would do well at all in this situation now that's not great but you look over here uh, some grass so anyway shade tolerance is a huge positive but now uh, in the summertime and that's the time I'm recording this video you start seeing uh, the weeds in the zoysia lawn. One of the other things that's great about zoysia, it does choke out weeds. It grows um, so thick, it doesn't get the weed pressure of, of other uh, grasses I deal with. You know, primarily Bermuda is what we have in our area. And zoysia lawns sometimes, um, with very little herbicide, can do great. But I want to talk to you about some of the weeds that we are seeing in the lawn and talk to you about some of the products we're using to control them. So, look at this. You got all this Kalinga here, and uh, I, I'm, I'm having trouble uh, identifying the different Kalingas. You got, well, in our area, you got false green Kalinga. I know sometimes you got green Kalinga. You got coxcomb Kalinga. You got globe sedge, which looks like a Kalinga to me. Yeah, anyway, a lot of different uh, Kalingas, but you can see this is just, honestly, it's just covered in it. But what happens in this situation a lot of times where there's a wet area it doesn't drain well uh, it's gonna thrive so Kalinga let me show you um, nut sedge but you know Kalinga seems to grow more like in little bunches like this where nut sedge uh, it is similar but it, it just grows uh, not quite as bunched together usually. Now, a yard may be covered in it, but it, it just, see, look at this situation here where the nut sedge is just kind of one there when they're not near as many leaves uh, on it as there is on Kalinga. All right, with that being said, you want to be real careful what you spray on a zoysia lawn when the weather's super hot, or any uh, lawn for that matter. So you may want to spray early in the morning, late in the evening, and then even then, uh, being careful what you're doing. So let me give you an example. In the springtime, I would probably um, use a lot of blindside on uh, weed control, but I'm not going to use much blindside on zoysia in the summertime because it can, you know, burn the grass. Same thing with some other products. In a ride-on spreader sprayer, a lot of times I'll go with eight ounces of change up and a quarter ounce of metsulfuron, but I'm hardly ever going to do that on a zoysia lawn in the summer. Now, use common sense here. If the if it's super hot. If it's been dry and, and the lawn is already showing some stress, then you're going to even want to be less likely to, to use any kind of herbicides or be very careful which ones you use. So uh, there's no way I'm planning to get out there and blanket spray a whole yard when it's 95 degrees and the yard hadn't been watered in two weeks and it doesn't look like the homeowner's planning to water the yard. So you gotta use common sense. Now here, this yard has been, we've had a lot of rain, it's healthy and green, but I'm still just gonna go around and spot treat the weeds. And I'm using Celsius and Certainty mixed together uh, most of the time on these situations. I'm gonna explain to you why. All right, so Certainty is, is a good sage product. It's a little more expensive than like uh, Pro Sage, which is another product I use. Um, the difference is Certainty is a little bit better on, well, actually in my opinion, a lot better on Kalinga, and it's about equally as effective on Nut Sage. So if a situation where I've got both Kalinga and Nut Sage, you know, I'm not gonna use Pro Sedge in this situation because I don't think it's gonna be very effective on this. And, and Certainty also has some effectiveness on Kalinga. So I just mix those two together. 
and for spot treat, I mean, it is a, a little bit expensive application, but for spot treating, I'm just worried about uh, the combination that can give me the most effectiveness without having to walk over the yard several times. One time with this product, one time with that product. So I mix those two together. And if you want to simplify things, I think that's a great combination because it's going to help with your nuts edge and your Kalinga and a lot of the other summer weeds we're going to show you. Another thing you want to consider in this time is uh, doing a grub control application. So we typically do this in May or June. I'm going to show you my fertilizer and I actually have the grub control to, uh, attached to the fertilizer. I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute. Um, but one of the reasons why I, I'm going to give you my understanding is that the grubs, uh, at least in our area, they, they, they're still at a, a young stage in May or June. And you can control them at that time, easier control. As they get larger throughout the summer and early fall, they begin, they're eating, feeding on the roots of your grass. And if you go into the winter with a weak root system, then you may end up with some winter damage that you might not notice until the following spring when your yard starts turning green and you got some areas that are not looking so good. It could be a result of a weak root system that was caused by not treating for grubs the previous May or June. So on our zoysia lawns, uh, we do grub control because the zoysia lawn, it, you know, it's not going to bounce back nearly as fast from drought damage or grub damage or you know, winter damage, whatever, as, as like a Bermuda yard, which is the one I'm comparing it with most often. All right, show you some more of the weeds. And again, uh, you, you guys that are watching, help me identify the difference of this. I, I believe this is false green Kalinga, my understanding, but I'm not sure. And then this one has a little bit different looking, uh, you see the little spiky thing on that? So if you know, and that one's a little taller. So what's the name of that one? I know some of you guys watch it probably know. Uh, but anyway, we've got different Kalingas. I, I get them confused sometimes. Um, what else is in the yard? Well, have got some, looks like some yellow wood sorrel just hanging around. That stuff just hangs around, seems like year round. Uh, Change Up is a great product. And I will just to be honest with you, I, I don't want to say like that Celsius and Certainty is the only price you can use on this lot this time. I wouldn't be opposed to coming in here and spot treating this um, with change up i'm gonna do it lightly and you know and just be careful and not uh, not you know I'm, I'm trying not to make brown spots now speaking of brown spots we've had a lot of rain lately and i do believe i'm seeing a little bit of dollar spot in the lawn so you can see the brown there and what it's doing and i've been seeing this in a lot of lawns I had a customer ask me about it yesterday and hopefully with with some hot dry weather it's going to grow out of that and the fertilizer um, can help it to grow out of it. My understanding is when you put out a, a fungicide, oftentimes you're doing nothing to actually cure the dollar spot. Uh, it's not doing serious damage to your lawn, it's just more cosmetic, doesn't look great. Um, but when, when you put out that uh, fungicide, you're, you basically get about three weeks of prevention um, from it happening again. Well, that's kind of not a great return for the cost of a fungicide. So typically we just fertilize and encourage the customers to mow their grass often. And with a hotter, drier weather, uh, it typically um, won't be as noticeable. But it's a very common fungus that is seen. You know, I see it just about every year. Now, as we come over here, I'm, I'm in a different section of this property. And this um, this is more of a, a Z52 or Meyer zoysia with the other look like an emerald zoysia with the finer leaf blade and this one has a wider leaf blade. They both can look good, um, but I want to show you some of the weeds that are popping up in here. All right, you can see in this situation you got Dallas grass here and Dallas grass is going to be really tough to get rid of at this time of year. Yeah, again, that Celsius certainty combo will have some effect on it, but gonna be more effective in the fall. And really, that would be my recommendation. Uh, even sometimes people talk about using MSMA, which is not legal on residential lawns, but it will greatly damage a zoysia lawn and discolor it. So I, I would, uh, even if you're going the illegal route, I wouldn't go that route on a zoysia lawn. So you don't wanna wait till the fall and just pound that with tribute total or Celsius uncertainty or manuscript or one of those type products. And then you got what looks to be some uh, burn weed popping up in here. American burn weed is, I believe that's what that is. But anyway, it's very common, like start, you know, April, May, 
um, in our area and, and usually just mowing the grass frequently will help with that um, but just about any herbicide will also knock it out it's very easily controlled a little bit difficult to prevent though when i'm using spectacle flow in the fall i do find that my yards have less burn weed all right then you got wild violet wild violet's one if you use a quinclorac product like uh, solitaire like cue ball or like uh, drive accelerate something with um and it's not the only thing you can use but those are seem to be the most effective it may take multiple applications wild violet is a difficult weed to control again you want to be careful with those products in hot summer temperatures when it comes to mowing the lawn in the summer as the zoysia begins to grow you want to mow it frequently especially if it's been fertilized and it's really thick and healthy and green I mean, probably at least weekly, just to be honest with you. If you don't want to mow that often, you want to keep it low, you could use a growth regulator like I do on my yard. I use a product called Podium, and it works great on helping me keep it low and tight without having to mow so often. My zoysia lawn in my house, I've got Zorro zoysia. I mow it at three inches, but you can mow it lower than that um, if, if you're able to you know, mow it low and, and keep it consistently low. Some types of zoysia, even a real mow at a half inch like palisades zoysia is one i know um, they say you can do that too so anyway but anyway i keep my zoysia a little longer one of the benefits of that is if it gets hot and dry and you don't have irrigation i mean you definitely need to water your zoysia because it's not going to bounce back from damage as we talked about but keeping it a little bit longer can probably help it not dry out so quickly if you like it short it's just going to make it all the more important to keep it watered as for water just like other grass types i would recommend at least in our area what we do is tell people water early in the morning you don't you saw the dollar spot out there if you're watering in the evening you're just asking for dollar spot because that water is going to sit on there all night and create um, you know spots on the leaf of the grass so uh, if you water early in the morning and water less often, if you're watering very often, you're asking for more nut sedge, more kalinga, more fungus, and uh, it's better just to soak your lawn really good once a week versus watering, let's say, three or four times a week for, uh, you know, 10 minutes. So you want to just give it one good soak. And I tell people, run it 30, 40 minutes once a week, and then don't run it the rest of the week. Don't run it 10 minutes every day. I mean, it's just uh, not ideal for the grass. Now, again, if you got... Uh, you live in a different climate or you've got uh, seasonal flowers things like that then you may have to adjust your water schedule for those but i'm talking specifically for the grass got a little bit of crabgrass propping up now obviously uh, the best way to go about that is just try to prevent it uh, or you know get ahead of it with a pre-emergent in january or february uh, but your your quinclorac products are also going to be effective on crabgrass and like we talked about possibly damaging the lawn in the summertime, I would just go easy on your spray and go a light rate, go easy and, and see does the turf tolerate it. You may have to do multiple applications, but you know, it, it'll let you know. If you spray it and three days later you got brown spot from where you spray it, it's probably not going to kill the lawn unless you just do a super heavy application. But um, you may make a, a brown spot in your lawn or your customer's lawn, which is not ideal. In my opinion, the zoysia definitely yeah, is more sensitive to herbicides when the weather is hot than Bermuda grass. All right, I'm gonna give you an example. You got people that's watering all the time or uh, sometimes people have weeds and you're like, well, what do I do? Look here, so there's a, a roof line here and it's got a gutter, but um, whatever reason, this low spot here is catching water. Matter of fact, I just saw a drop of water coming from a crack in the gutter up there and it fell right here. So the point being, this area here, it stays wet. And look at it, it is almost solid Kalinga. Now, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but this whole area around here, about a four foot circle, is Kalinga, Kalinga, Kalinga. Now, again, maybe the false green Kalinga. Shows you that, that when you have an area that doesn't drain well, I see it around the little box drains in the yard. I see it around where an air conditioner is uh, leaking in, you know, water out into the yard. An area that stays wet, you're just feeding uh, the Kalinga and the nut sedge. So that's why I'm saying don't just water your yard all the time because those weeds definitely like that type of environment. I wanna give you uh, just a close up of, you see how 
narrow and fine that leaf blade is here is what I would call an emerald zoysia. Though I, I'll admit my Zorro zoysia at home, I couldn't tell the difference in it and emerald. If they were side by side, they both have that real fine leaf blade. But then you get over here to the Z52 or Meyer zoysia and you can see the leaf blade is significantly wider. So, you know, not too easy to, not too difficult to distinguish between those two varieties of zoysia. The emerald seems to grow, is a little more shade tolerant and also grows even thicker. Um, but they both can look look great. I've got some yards I take care of that are emerald and uh, Z52 and, and have some very nice yards in both those varieties. But if you are dealing with a, a really shady area, I'd push you more toward the, the fine leaf bladed ones like emerald or Zorro that are a little bit more shade tolerant than the wider leaf blade varieties. And of course you're gonna have stuff like spurge popping up in the summertime. And, you know, there's other weeds. You got uh, Lespedeza and you got uh, Chamber Bitter. And I, mean, I don't know, you know, there's just the same old weeds you see all the time. Um, but like I said, Celsius, Celsius Certainty Combo is a great one. Or, or you can use Change Up at a, at a low rate and you can mix it with Certainty. Uh, if you don't have Kalinga, you can, sometimes I'll do Change Up and Pro Sage, a little cheaper than the Celsius and Certainty combo, and it's also effective, just not as good on Kalinga. So you see in this situation, you got tons of Kalinga. Um, and, and some people say, Jason, can you spell that? It's K-Y-L-L-I-N-G-A, I believe. Um, but anyway, you, you need to go with Certainty. Or another product too is Dismiss NXT. And, and again, I'm gonna push you to test that out on a small spot. Uh, to see if it's gonna burn your grass or not in the hot summer months. Now, when it's uh, in the fall or in the winter or in the spring, you know, now be careful during transition periods, but uh, when it's not so hot, you can uh, spray things. Like I said, I use Blindside um, early in the year when the temperatures are lower, but I don't like to use it in the summertime. All right, here's my uh, fertilizer and it's, I'm gonna show you a couple things I've done this year. This is a Harrell's uh, fertilizer, it's a 38, uh, 06 blend as is that over there 3806 blend now you say one bag's yellow one bag's white what's what's going on with that well the yellow bag is my zoysia fertilizer and the white bag is my bermuda fertilizer they're both a 3806 so 38% nitrogen and I spread them at the same rate but we say well what's the difference what are you um, you know color coordinating here the yellow has uh, merit attached to it, which is a, uh, they call it the word, I learned it this year, is called sparge. So they sparge the, the merit or the grub control product to the fertilizer. So it's all mixed together in the bag. And what's great about it is I can put it out at the rate that I was already putting out the fertilizer and the, the mare is also going out at the correct rate. So like I talked about the importance of grub control. So now I'm just putting out the grub control and the fertilizer at the same time. Uh, very effective and just doing the grub control built into my program on zoysia lawns. I don't typically include that on the Bermuda lawns. Now they're able to recover much faster uh, from grub damage. Now understand this, a lot of lawns have grubs. They can tolerate a certain amount of grubs. So when you get too many grubs is when you end up um, getting that weak root system going into winter and could possibly have some winter damage. So, um, so on the zoysia lawns, we build in the grub control and it's in this yellow bag. And yeah, like I said, doing that, that's, it works out great because the time I'm fertilizing, May and June, is also the time that we need to be doing the grub control. So uh, that's what I'm doing this year. You can also just buy, um, you know, the Merit, or I uh, use a generic version called Criterion that's a generic Merit, and you can put it out separately as a separate grub control product and, and fertilize separate if you want to do it that way. Over here, you've got uh, Bermuda grass. You see here, that snuck into your zoysia. How do you get that out? I have no idea, but I've had situations where people ask me that. I've got a little bit of Bermuda growing in my zoysia. I don't know, I'm, I'm lost uh, cause on that one. If you know, please leave that in the comments. This looks like some Bahia grass growing up in here. And what we spray on that is, is Metzulfuron. It's a product called MSM Turf, or there's, it's under other uh, names but it, it puts up that big Y stalk usually you can identify if you don't know what it looks like usually have a pinkish purplish base to the plant so let's see let's see the uh, color there it's kind of pink, pink purple looking 
So that's Bahia grass, and uh, you just spray with that midsole furon. It may not, a quarter ounce per acre. Um, it, it may not uh, kill the plant, but it should at least knock it back for a while. Virginia buttonweed, um, it, you know, change up works good on that. I, I like blind side, but again, I'm not gonna do that when the weather's super hot. I hey, appreciate you guys watching the video. Hopefully you learned something. Leave your comments below. Maybe you've got some other tips to add what you're doing on your zoysia lawns, what you're doing different to me. Uh, if you can help me identify some of those uh, Kalinga plants, that would be great as well. There is over 600 uh, videos on the channel that are dealing with lawn care, so if you're not subscribed, I would encourage you to do that. You can also go to lawncarelife.com if you like weed control stuff. I've got courses available, I got documents, I got programs for your grass types, all available at lawncarelife.com, helping people uh, have a better uh, lawn, and also if they're starting a weed control fertilization business or a mowing business or a mosquito spraying business, we got the resources at LawnCareLife.com. I'm Jason Creel. Appreciate you watching, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.